What's going on, everybody? What's good? What's good? This is the therapist ATL, and this is an AFN exclusive, courtesy of the Rex Pit. My brother be on later on. You know, he'll probably pop in and out. Salute to Blackberry for allowing us to get this stuff done. But me and my brothers right now, we about to we about to clamp down and bring y'all some updated news on the NFL and the Falcons. So uh with that being said, let's get this going. Let's get it. As y'all can see up on the screen, we have a new Falcons assistant head coach slash defensive back coach. Now, y'all have been hearing this man's name for the last five or six days, and we here, we're going to break it down and everything. Hey, Ann, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he – look, bro, he been around a, a long time, man, just like – Dean Pease. Um and he gives he gives us some much needed experience as far as coaching staff goes. And since Nielsen does not have experience calling plays, mm-hmm. he could ask he could ask your means for you know like, okay, what you think I should do here? Or, you know, give him some pointers. I mean, because Nielsen's specialty is front seven. Yeah. And his his uh specialty is, you know, in working the uh the secondary, you know, stuff like that. So I think it's gonna mesh well, like very well. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Well, with that, let's go ahead and get to the the panel. See who we see who we got in here. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. All right. So, yeah, we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have a. Uh, Damn it. Yeah, Dirk Cutter trying to call and find out what we know. <laughs> you got jokes. <laughs> Yeah, and, I'll, and and our, and our brother Will will be on soon. So you know, you know, me and Ann, we just gonna go right into it. Dirt cutter, we don't need nothing. We ain't buying nothing. We don't you can't come back to the Falcons. We don't need none yeah. of them problems, no All right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but fellas, this is what we have been trying to um explain to people in great fashion. I've talked about it, uh, Mike, Blackberry, K Styles, Jew, Unholy Alliance. This team right now is focused on the long term. We're not playing. See, they're cut a call to me. See, see. <laughs> we don't want none. No more, no more greens. Only corn and potatoes. Well, you know I. I think it was a good high, bro. Yeah. Yeah. First, you know what I mean? Like, with Dan Pease, I think he showed a little more loyalty, you know what I'm saying, before he, you know, he got that old that old guy syndrome. He he stuck down to the gun until he seen it was too nasty to go on the bench that linebacker. You feel what I'm saying? So, you, you know, you, you, ahead, know what, what Will, you know what, Will, you, you bring up an interesting point. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 hear me out. In my opinion, Dean Pease, Dean Pease was here to help lay a structural foundation for the identity. Yeah, you know for what, what, for what he did. What I, I think he did. That. He did a great job at that. Now yeah. let me tell you what I was thinking though. I'm thinking him and uh, Arthur Smith. 
promised these guys they were going to start no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Like with Marcus Mariota and Mackel uh, Williams when uh, when they got rid of De- um, Deion Jones. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking mm-hmm. they're like, man, look, you got this. No matter how rocky it get, you just go out there and do your thing. Then they, they, they end up coming down with like Marcus Mariota with the butt throws and everything like that because he felt like he wasn't going to lose his job. And to the point, like, well, like, Arthur Smith got to the point where he had no choice, bro. You playing so bad, I ain't got no choice but to bench you, bro. I can't <laughs> leave you out there like that. Might as well see what the Ricky got before we got, you know what I'm saying, before we go in the off season. You feel what I'm saying? So, that's all I believe it was. It was just a case of the loyalty, you know what I mean, being loyal to these, to these players, you know what I'm saying, a little too loyal, too loyal. You feel what I'm saying? They could be a... Uh, a poison at the same time, to you feel what I'm saying? We too loyal. Well, before I get before I get to that, um, let's get this up. One ninety nine set up. What's going on, the eighty five? Appreciate you, bro. Say, hey, we good. Yes, we sir. doing good, man. Thanks for tuning in. Um, but I want you guys to follow me, and then I'm I'm gonna I'm pass this off to Ed. Mm-hmm. What uh, happened was what happened was, in my opinion, we had we had no identity, and when you don't have an identity. There's nothing for your players to get behind. There's no schemes. There's no amount of, of, of play calling. There's no amount of anything that you can do to galvanize the team because they're like marble. They're bouncing all over the place. So when they brought in Dean Pease and they brought in Arthur Smith, basically what it was is they wanted to build a foundation to where it was amoeba style, it was physical, and it was in your face. But – we all know you don't always continue the path with people you start off with. Dean Pease, like he said in his interview, he those were his players. And like you said, those were his players, and he was loyal to his players. But Dean Pease had a, a certain way that he wanted to play. Now, with him retiring – he set a foundation to where all of the players know this is our this is our identity. This is how we're going to function. Yep. Now right, you right. bring in now you bring in Nielsen. You bring in um, what's the last what's the last name in? Great. Yeah, right. there you go. You bring yeah. him in, and what they do is they say, "Okay, you guys know your foundation. You guys have had success with what Dean P started." What we're going to do now is we're going to take that foundation and we're just going to modify it slightly to give you guys an edge. We see that you guys have adhered to it. We see that you guys bought into the culture. Now we're going to give you an edge, something that where now teams are going to be able to fear you. And what a lot of people, what a lot of people was going over a lot of people's heads is the way it came out is he was the DB coach. But by him being the assistant head coach, what that does is now him and Arthur Smith can actually sit down and they can basically go over the entire team. And I said this on the other show. They're now going to design a balanced team that attacks you at every position because each one of those coaches' DNA is embedded in the team now. Arthur Smith was an O-lineman. His DNA is embedded in the offense. The other coach's DNA is embedded in defense. He is going to have that part where he can convey. Because you got to think, defensive coaches, a player that play can talk to players. Doesn't matter if you're a coach because you're not speaking over their head. You can get them to do and and operate in a manner in which most coaches don't that that are just coaches. Period. Well, we in, my opinion, like, oh, in my opinion, in my opinion, some of the best coaches were former players. Mind you, he's a former Facts. first round player. Facts. <clears throat> so I'm I'm gonna shoot this over to Ed. Ed, what's your take on on that? Look, bro. You know what? I want I want everybody to go with me here. Just 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 picture what what did Bill Belichick uh, build with the Pats? Now they was trash when he first got there. 
Facts. Just like what, just like what Arthur Smith when he first got here, we was down in dumps, thanks to the old regime. But now we're starting to start to build towards the future, like you said, Juan. Like <clears throat> this is a team that we're in the we're right in the middle. Like this is not a team that's five six years off. Nah, bro. We can win right now. We've already done it. Yeah. Two, two years in a row. So, and the only thing that we had, to, we needed to fix was, you know, a couple of tweaks in, in the defense. Getting, you know, getting off on third down, getting some, you know, timely stops and timely sacks. We got, we got a couple of sacks. But we didn't get enough sacks in the right time. And that's where Nielsen comes in and getting stops, you know, stopping people from, you know, shredding our defense in the middle. That's where Gray comes in. Yeah. He can show show our DBs where to be, where not to be. Okay, if we're in this coverage, okay, then we can make plays. I'm telling you, we 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 are building. It, look, we're gonna be something to deal with for the next. I say at least ten years. Facts, facts. Will, what's your take on what? What's your take on the hiring and dynamic position they put Gray in? Well, check this out. I'm going to go back to what y'all saying. You know what I'm saying? About Dan P laying that foundation. He already had us multiple. Mm-hmm. What we was lacking that is the individual development. Right. I said that when I was going through a season, looking at the season, I'm like, man, that D-line development is sucking right now, bro. I'm like, I'm not seeing nobody putting moves together. You feel what I'm saying? I see Grady Jerry putting about three, four moves together. I'm looking mm-hmm. at everybody else. I'm like, all they doing is bull rushing, bro. Oh, I see one just doing a rip. You know what I'm saying? I don't see nobody putting setting up a rip to do a spin move or you know what I'm saying? I don't see nobody doing none of this. So I'm mm-hmm. like that, that individual development is lacking. And that's what is key to when you building something, bro. When you building the engine, it ain't the big parts that make it go, bro. It's the, all these small parts that working. Yeah. When all these when all these parts work together, then they get that engine going. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And that's what and that's what we were, we were lacking at, bro. When you look right. at it, and Dan P's covered up a lot of that, bro. He covered up a lot of that that we was lacking from. By his scheme, his scheme work. Yep. Going blitzes in there. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So he was hey man, he just, he see, he made the defense better than what it really was. Yeah. Yeah. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. yeah. Like with like with uh what the name oh your boy from, from the Saint he gonna put some nastiness in them boy you feel what I'm saying because he's gonna mm. demand more he gonna demand mm. more from you you feel what I'm saying you yeah. seen how them Saint play when, when when your boy Cam Jordan went to the sideline mm. they didn't stop that pass rush bro them boys been, still were hunting we've been talking yeah, about this hunt, bro. Months, bro. and if yeah. you go up to the Green Bay when that boy was up there coaching them all. The secondary, them boy press coverage. They mm-hmm. in your grill, bro. They look, they, you know what I'm saying? They turning their head to see where the ball is, not turning their head too late. You know what I'm saying? You got our DB turning their head way too late, bro. How can you catch something you can't see? This guy. Ain't no way, bro. You got to <laughs> yeah, get their what? head around. You see that man look at that ball? You you get your eye to that ball. Use them peripheral vision, man. We got them for a reason, bro. Well, well, I'm glad you said work. that. I'm, I'm glad you said that because you, 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 um, you, you, yeah. you segueing into what I was, what I was going to come up with next. The things that people need to pay attention to is this: <clears throat> Jerry Gray is going to give this team the ability to where we don't have to lean on our secondary as much, and like Will said. During those games, and the most pivotal game I'm going to point out is when we play the Bengals. Mm. Because 
up until that point, our team was getting at quarterbacks, disrupting disrupting their their pass game, stopping their run game. But when they decided to protect the quarterback and he decided to throw, what would happen is our secondary was not prepared for that. We always right. complained about the middle being wide open. So we're pushing the mentality that we're going to get players so that front seven is more stout, is more gritty, is able to get pa- is able to get that pass rush so that we don't have to worry about them picking us apart in the secondary. Now, Nielsen will help with that edginess. Mm-hmm. Jerry is going to turn around and make sure that the guys in the secondary, your safeties, your corners, are going to be able to cover. So when they decide to go over the top, there is no going over the top. Right. That, sec- that, that, hole, that hole in the middle practically disappears. And when teams know that they can't go over the top on you and they have to rely on the run game, then you pin their ears back. Yep. Now, the second thing is with, with this dynamic, now what you have is, and I told people before, you got Arthur Smith, you got Terry Fontenot. Terry Fontenot is a numbers guy. You got Nielsen. Nielsen was on the squad that Terry Fontenot came from. Relationships. <clears throat> you're going to get Jerry and you're going to get Nielsen and you're going to have them sit down. And if you saw, Nielsen was at the game with Arthur Smith. Mind you, Arthur Smith did two things that stuck out to people. First of all, he talked to Belichick. Pay very close attention to that. Mm -hmm. You don't think he was getting jewels off of Belichick. Number two, Nielsen showed up when he did not have to so that him and Arthur Smith could start working on the plan. Why? Because they're going to go to film they're going to sit down and they're going to pick apart the defense and see who's who's going to work for that scheme and what areas and who they're going to need. And then they're going to go to Terry and be like, yo, we want this, 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 and this. What can you do? Yeah, well, and see Terry what, will what, get back. Go ahead, my fault. Yeah, and what, ter- and what Terry would do in turn, Terry going to see where he can squeeze money Who's got to get let go? Who can they use that's on the practice squad so that they can save money? And then, hey, by the time they decide, you know, they, they want to part ways with Mariota, you got extra funds. What they're going to do is Terry's going to find out where I can where I can cut stuff to save money before I spend money. And then they're going to look at free agency. Now, mind you, the yesterday, Mike and them just told you, you spend a lot of money in free agency. So you got the best thing is – you find your money in house first, then you go to free agency, and then you go to the draft. So, pay very close attention to this chess match because you got players that's going to come into free agency from these teams, and it's going to be a lot of bouncing around. Because right now, what we're sitting on, and we about to get into the next topic after this is the reason why our defense needs to be top tier because now we have an opportunity to take advantage of our division. What were you about to say, Will? Yeah, what I was saying, though, like, man, folks fail to realize how smart the Arthur Smith is, bro. Yeah. <laughs> how smart the man is. When he first got the job, first thing he did was go top down there to Kirby Smart, bro. Yeah. How late Kirby Smart, you know what I'm saying? I mean, pick your brain a little bit. Seeing what he's doing to be successful now. And then, mm-hmm. like you said, up there at the Shrine, what it was, at the Shrine practice or something like that? Yeah. He up there talking to Bill Belichick. He always trying to see how he can get better. He he looks around the league. He checks out these offenses, seeing how he can integrate it into his offense. You know what I'm saying? Then we got what, what these hires right here do is make this defense cohesive. It make everything work together. What we was doing sometime last year, man, the defensive line might be playing good, but the secondary playing like eggs. The secondary playing good, but the defensive line can't get no pressure. It was mm-hmm. never cohesive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now this going to teach them how to work as one. You feel me? 
So like, gotcha. you know, Dan P's defense, it ain't no easy defense. You Dude. know what I'm saying? He was get he was awesome. getting them to learn that defense, so he can throw in different wrinkles to it. You feel what I'm saying? So when they take that, and when they got to learn that, that individual, like I was saying earlier, that individual work is important, bro. When they not getting yeah. good individual work, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna look as crisp out there, bro. Do your but job. if they confident, if they confident in what they do, oh man, they they, they ain't worried about nothing. The offense doing out there. Because if you confident in what you're doing on defense, all you're doing is playing that grass. You're playing that grass, you're feeling that man. You worry about what you're controlling out here on this grass. You're feeling that, that offense, um, that receiver or that running back or whatever. You're feeling that. You feel what I'm saying? You're seeing that with your eye. You're using them parameters, like I was saying. But if you're playing that, play, that, that grass out there, ain't nothing that can change. They can't make the grass wider. They can't make no. the grass longer. Nope. You play that grass, bro. You cover what you're supposed to cover. That's all. That's all you gotta do out there, bro. That's what I'm. That's all I'm saying. I just want to see that, and I think the defense finna do that. They finna do that, bro. Cause yeah. what, when we play the Saints, what do you see? Them boys are very attention to detail, mm-hmm. and the reason mm-hmm. we were beating them, cause Matt Ryan was smart on uh, opening up holes. He he wasn't scared to thread that needle. He would thread that, that needle right there. You know what I'm saying? When that when that window open up, he he there. He ain't missing that window. But it's very, it, it ain't wide windows that this guy got to throw to. If we playing the Saints, they don't have wide windows to throw to, bro. It's always competitive. They might hold a little bit, but, hey, they get away with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, do you know what we are? Bruh, you, you struck on the gym right there. Now, I hope everybody mm-hmm. was listening to you. You struck on the gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because what I'm about to say before I pass it to Ant is, is key, and I'm pretty sure Ant going to back me up on this. <laughs> I said this on one of the shows, and I still stand on it today. I said if we would have had Ritter earlier in the season, it would have changed the landscape of us getting there. The reason being, if you look at these last four games, the last two in particular, I said it from the preseason game, and y'all can go all the way back to the beginning. I didn't say it five, six shows ago. Go back. I said that young man is not afraid to throw the ball. He is not afraid of pressure. And mm-hmm. I said he is one where he will step up in the pocket in the in the face of pressure and still make a play. And it showed as many times as he threaded the needle without any interception to receivers. You got to think. And this is something else I said a, a couple two shows ago. Kyle Pitts would not have come to the game had Mariota still been there. He came to the game in person to see how Ritter was doing. Why? Because he recognizes this young man right here, when I get back and I get better, I'm going to get touches. I'm going to be able to do what I got to do because no tight end, wide receiver, running back, or anybody on the offensive line wants to have a 1,000-yard rookie season and then turn around and have a bad season because they're not getting touches. Nobody wants to do that. And the fact that you said that lets me know that you 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 basically going where I'm going. People are people right now are got reservations on Ritter because he's a rookie and he only played four games. Trust and believe when I tell you. Trust and believe when I tell you. Arthur Smith don't have to worry about the defense being what the defense is going to be. He can focus on the offense totally. Why? Because he's got two guys that already understand. The second thing is Jerry is a former first round pick he understands the dna of defense he's a veteran so that means that he can mold them guys and give them that personal development that will was talking about so because he's going to be able to coach everybody up around so people like um anderson eba Ketty, and grady jarrett can eat We're not playing checkers no more. This is all chess. This is all chess. And we got a scrambling quarterback. All right? Not a running back that can throw. A scrambling quarterback. Which means that this man, which means that this man can yes, read defenses. Go through progression. And if pressure ain't what it's supposed to be, he can escape the pocket and still make a play. 
Mm. But and go ahead, man. Let you, give me your thoughts before we segue into this 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 other explosive news we got for him. Man, look, y'all done said everything, man. Like it, it starts with the foundation and the development of the players. Something that that word has not been taught around here too often. Like we don't know what that means in this organization. It's foreign, it, it's foreign to <laughs> us because we we haven't had to do it. I mean, when was the last time we we developed players? Like, come on, bro. <laughs> Close to never. I had to say when uh when Mike Smith first started, they were big on development. I how, had to get long, them boys how long, there. Okay, how long ago was that? A long time. Yeah, long okay. time ago. Many moons ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's been too damn long. We haven't we haven't developed any type of talent. Like we got Grady in the middle, and that's it. Like nobody else is doing their job, or you know. And then the secondary is it, it's been worse. But we getting better. That's what I say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say this. We we not going to hold y'all back from this because I'm pretty sure, you know, you guys that have been on Twitter and and YouTube and seen. But um, the news what? is out. The, new, the news is out today. I seen it earlier today that um, Tom Brady – uh, has decided to retire for good, per his quote. Um, it's been a lot of sources that have put it out. It's been a buzz on on Good Morning Football, you know, all, all over. And, um, I mean, personally, I'm like, okay, he gone. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. But yeah. what it means to this fan base is – we have we're in a unique position and we have a unique opportunity but before i do that who wow. did slid up in here who, who that is what home team what's happening y'all that, it's, the maestro, with that? it's the maestro himself is blackberry lorex what's going on blackberry hey man look oh. we, we glad you was able to jump on bruh Hey, since you on here, man, start us off with the uh, with, with, your, with your thoughts on um, um, Jerry Gray, or you can jump on the Tom Brady, man, whichever. Uh, yeah, I'll start out with Jerry Gray. Um, you know, being a fan of football and being a former ball player myself, mm-hmm. um, you get excited about hirings like Jerry Gray. You get excited about those highs for a coaching position, even though he is not. This ain't his first rodeo, of course. You know he done been a, a, a defensive coordinator for the Bills, for the for the Titans. Um, he done. I mean, this ain't his first rodeo, but you get excited that guys like him continue to get work in the NFL as a coach. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it, per how his tenure goes here. And, and I'm hoping it's it's a lengthy one, you know. I'm hoping it's it's some we get some you know some good stuff out of out of Jerry for about a good seven to ten years, you know. Mm. I'm hoping that's what the kind of tenure we looking like. And depending on how that looks, with him being here, he could land him a head coaching job finally somewhere down the road. Uh, you 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 want things like that for the the Jerry Grays of the world because when this guy played football, this guy was a baller, man. Mm. He was two-time second-team All-Pro, four-time Pro Bowl player. This guy knows the position. He knows how to be a defensive back, man. He He's he's going to uh, do wonders, okay? He's going to do wonders to this secondary. And because this is a developing type coaching staff. This ain't a coaching staff that go out there and look for whoever the hottest new 
trend is in the free agency. You know, they, that ain't what this – that ain't the kind of coaching staff this is. This is a coach <laughs> staff that, you know, and, and this ain't a general manager that's like that neither in Terry Fontenot. They pride themselves on developing talent. And mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. best organizations, the way you become a franchise, the way you become a dynasty – You think about San Antonio Spurs. You think about the Los Angeles Lakers back in the day, not now. But you think about, (laughs) you know, you you think about, right, yeah, you you think about the New England Patriots. You think about the uh, Buffalo Bills teams from from back in the day. You think about the Pittsburgh Steelers. These teams were capable and able consistently and persistently year after year to develop talent that they went and got, that they scouted, that they recruited. And it, it, it's that's what we're building here in Atlanta now. That's what we're building here now. Uh, we were on that path, you know, late 90s, early 90s, uh, late, late 80s, you know, up until like 2000, 2001, that's the path we were on. Mm-hmm. Developing talent. It wasn't about who who was hot out there in free agency. Who's the what's the next superstar to be in free agency that we can go throw some money at? That ain't yeah. what they, that that's not what this coaching staff is about. So the hirings you're seeing now with the Ryan Nielsen, with the Jerry Gray, that's what you're going to get here in Atlanta from now on. It's a part of the culture change that Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith were raving about when they got here. No more of that pussy mouth feeding, uh, uh, you know, talking and, and, and pussy footing around <laughs> type style of team that's, at, that's out here trying to run around everybody. No, we gonna Come on, guys. Come on, we guys. We're going to run through you, and we're going to be able to dominate you physically, and we're going to outsmart you uh, with the coaches. With the uh, coaching, that's is what that's the culture that you're going to get here now in Atlanta. And Ryan Nielsen and Jerry Gray are they are prime examples of that. If you look at their their resume, they prime examples of that. Facts, facts, facts. facts. So, yes, so what's your um what's your take on that? What um how do you feel about? the position that we're in right now with Tom Brady finally will spe- – I'll I, I say Allegedly. finally is whatever with him Allegedly. saying he's stepping down, you know, from the NFL for good. Mm-hmm. Well, not, you know, with him, you know, saying it now. And, and I'm going to be this guy today, okay? <laughs> <laughs> with, with him saying it now, uh, if, it's, if it holds, because, you know, we've seen – we seen him do it, and we seen other quarterbacks do it. Say they retiring and and come back out of retirement, right. um, like within a week. <laughs> but uh, if it does hold, I'm gonna be this guy today. I'm gonna congratulate Tom Brady and give him his flowers, and I'm gonna say it was a hell of a ride with Tom Brady in the NFL, man. As a football fan, you know. He gave he gave us things to talk about. He gave us excitement. He gave us drama. He gave us plenty of things to have to look forward to with football in, in the National Football League. Uh, it took him a while to realize it's time to hang it up. But in you know, to go to his defense with that a little bit, until I see the wheels done fail completely off, I'm gonna run that thing to the wheels fall out. You know what I'm saying? So right, right. I don't I, I don't blame him at all. You know, uh, we talk cash money about him. It's it's fun to talk trash about Tom Brady if you're an Atlanta Falcon fan. It's fun uh, because we don't we don't necessarily like him when he playing us, and we don't really like him when he playing anybody because we just think he's a crybaby on the field. But you know, man, hey man, flowers off to you, Tom Brady. Uh, it was fun, man. We appreciate you. You know, giving your body, giving your mind, giving your time. We appreciate it. And uh, even though we know you got paid handsomely for it, we appreciate you, man. Yeah. So, Will, what's your uh, feelings and take on um, Tom Brady, uh, you know, supposedly 
leaving the NFL for good. And what do you think about our opportunity as far as the NFC South is concerned? Well, my point is, I don't care if that motherfucker was leaving or not, bro. I want to play the best at the best time, anytime on the field. That's how you build you a dynasty. You know what I'm saying? You're not scared to play whoever. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what I liked about Desmond Riddle when he played against him. He didn't flinch. Not one time. He was out there going blow for blow for him. Yep. And Tom Bowl, Tom Bowl went here and took Tom Brady out. I don't like the way they hit Tom Brady. We're going to take him out. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, I used to like Tom Brady when he when he first started, man. That man, I like the story and everything. But then he got cocky at the end, so I ain't like that, bro. I ain't like that. He got cocky and he started doing all that bitching and all that. I ain't like all that. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> so, he a great player that would never be took from him. But what folks got to realize, Bill Belichick made that man. Bill Belichick was in that man here every day teaching them defenses. Every defense they going to show this man. Every defense he was going to see out there, Bill Belichick was breaking it down to him. If you go back and look at the documentary, they were telling you that. So I don't want to know why folks were thinking like, hey, man, Tom Brady made the Patriots. No, 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 no. Bill Belichick built the dynasty down there. You know what I'm saying? And folks... Once the new players came in, they ain't have no Tom Brady down to show them that this worked. You know what I'm saying? So they was a little hard-headed at first. And that's why I took Bill Belichick a little time to build that thing right back up. You feel what I'm saying? To get back to the playoff. But what happened when he went down to Tampa Bay? He took that same Belichick routine to Tampa Bay. They be like, man, we got to do this. We got to do this if we want to win. And what happened? They won the Super Bowl. Him and Bruce Aaron were bopping head. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, like, he a great quarterback, bro. That would never be taken from him, bro. That would never. Six-round quarterback coming in, you know what I mean? Six, uh, what, seven Super Bowl ring? What, the man had, like, five MVPs or something like that in the Super yeah. Bowl? Yeah. Man, come on, he, you can't take that away from him. But what slowed us up, like I was talking to y'all earlier, our development, that was slowed us up, bro. Our player development was lacking, bro. We had so many chances now. And, like, when we was in the Super Bowl, when they was talking to him about that, what, um, dang, what that cornerback name who with us, boy? Uh, with Trufant? No, not Alpha. him. Alpha. 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 When he was talking about they went into halftime thinking they had the game, they were having a party. That's, you yeah, feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on, bro. You playing a man who been through this Super Bowl stuff, bro. Years of experience. You, everybody know, bro, that game ain't over till that clock strike 3 0, bro. <laughs> till that clock, yeah, that clock strike 3 0, that game's still going, bro. But we cost ourselves plenty of time around here, bro. And I think this way off the Smith building is built to sustain, like what we got down here in Georgia. You feel what I'm saying? Like them Georgia Bulldogs. He got some sustainability. He already done built his identity last year. He showed them, bro, we're going to come punch you in your mouth. You ain't ready for it. You better start begging dogs and whatever. You feel what I'm saying? Right. He already showed them that. We're going to punch you in your mouth when we come out here. And how many one-score games we had? 13. Come on, bro. <laughs> come on. If we had a quarterback, if he wasn't loyal to that quarterback, bro, we good in the playoff easily. Easily. Because what it took uh, your boy Dez Marilla, what, two games to get right? It took him two games, bro. Yeah. Took him two games, and he showed up when he got a chance. Now the national media want us to get this Lamar Jackson so we can break it back down, so they can break this back down. You feel what I'm saying? Put us behind the eight ball, where we just came from. That's why they pumping all this Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson. Come on, bro. Y'all see what Desmond Ridley really did. That man didn't show no fear out there. They don't see it. Not you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That boy didn't show no fear out there. They see it, and we just see this, you know what I'm saying, this black quarterback, mm-hmm. he run like Vic. Oh, but we had that good Vic experience around here. You know what I mean? We loved it, but what did we win with Vic? No. We did not win, bro. <laughs> so I don't care how much you love that man shaking folk, making them all uh, tap, tap each other, whatever. We ain't win with Vic down here, bro. He sold tickets, that for sure. <laughs> he sold hell of tickets. All right, so, Ant. All right, Ant. Well, with that, what's your um what's your take on it? You know what? 
<laughs> I'm not gonna believe that shit until I don't see him on the field. <laughs> um, exactly. I, I said, look, I've been saying this shit all fucking day, bro. I put that it in the chat said, earlier. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Bro, I put it. I put it in the chat earlier. I put it on Twitter. I put it on Facebook. Everything. Look, I do not believe this nigga at all, bro. Because he already did it. And then as far as, look, okay. I, I might be that. I'm, I'm going to be that guy on the opposite on the opposite end of y'all. I ain't going to take away his you know, accolades, but <clears throat> it's just like I had put it on Twitter this morning. You can, in my eyes, you cannot be a GOAT if you have these cheating scandals looming over your head. I'm sorry. I I can't do it. I don't give a damn how many Super Bowls you won, how many MVPs you won. Don't care. How How many number one defenses do you have? One just, year. <laughs> One year. <laughs> just, I, look, this is what I'm saying, though. This is what I'm saying. Like, he had a lot of help. But people turn the blind eye to that shit. And they give him the keys to the, you know, to whatever car he want. Nah, bro. You can't have that with me. <clears throat> well, I'm going to put it like this. I will never take no accolades away from a player. I'm going to say he was the most exceptional quarterback of of our time right now. Of our time. Because we grew up watching greats like Joe Montana, Peyton Manning. Nah, and I'm not going to take that away from him. He He has done some exceptional things. Greatest of all time, I have reservations on that. For a simple fact that you, if there's a couple of championships and there's a couple of wins and things that come into question, but that's neither here nor there. What I will say is this. We're in a prime position and have a unique opportunity. And I'm going to bring everything together. People have been complaining about the Falcons for the last five years because we've been trying to, quote, unquote, rekindle that 2016 magic. Last two years, and I'm, I'm talking about last last season and this past season we just played, we were 7-10. and 10 With first-time new head coach and defensive coordinator. What we have right now is NFC South is wide open. And three-quarters of the NFC South right now is in bad shape. Thank you. Now, Panthers have a decent, decent defense. Don't sleep. But I don't see them running away with the NFC South. It's just my opinion. You ain't got to like it. (laughs) We have been making very serious moves, moves that you guys, we don't speak about until the last minute on purpose. Hell hell no. Uh Uh-uh. Saints. Get 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 the hell up out of here! Hell no, no no, not doing this foolishness today. <laughs> oh no! no. <laughs> hell no! But the the Saints. You talking about that? Who that? No no. Yes. Yes. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> okay 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 yeah. And I'm I'm about to get on that because whether or not, and he in here, that's fine. Whatever. I'm about to give him some tussing because he obviously sick. First of all, y'all team right now is in shambles. Okay, y'all team is in shambles because y'all don't know who gonna be y'all quarterback next season. Let's be real about that. Y'all got a y'all got a carousel of broke quarterbacks. Okay, y'all in cap hell. Yeah, y'all got a couple of picks because y'all y'all all time coach decided he didn't want to come back and play in y'all sandbox no more. All right, we got y'all coach on the defensive side. Y'all mad about that? So. I don't see where y'all going to progress from here because it ain't up. Tampa Bay, 
<clears throat> Not with Dennis <clears throat> Allen, they ain't going nowhere. No, nah, Dennis right, Allen right. sucks, bro. Right. So, so Tampa Bay, y'all about to y'all about to end up if 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 this Brady thing if this Brady uh, uh confession holds, y'all about to end up going back to the days of thirty for thirty. Or you remember Josh Freeman? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just being real. Y'all going back to the days of thirty for thirty, and Panthers, y'all, 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 all right. But don't think, don't think because y'all got a decent defense right now that y'all gonna run away with the NFC South. No, the reason why I say we are because we were twelve one score games away from the playoffs. On a roster that was slated dead last, plus two and fifteen. Mm-hmm. We Carolina don't know. Carolina don't even know who their quarterback gonna be, so I'm not worried right. about that. that, that right, that right. That they, they don't even know they're gonna keep Wilkes. So if you're not right. keeping Wilkes, then then you got to bring in another defense coordinator to run a whole different defense. There you go. This so is what I'm talking. Yeah, that's crazy, man. So we mm-hmm. in a prime position right now to take advantage of our divisions off the rip. So that's four, that's eight games right there. That's, that's eight games right there that we can have under our belt. <clears throat> if we focus on building the trenches, player development and making sure, like Will said, that we have a cohesive defense and we're cohesive and balanced on all phases of the ball. Offense, defense, special teams. We already got an identity. We already have a running game that's damn near that was damn near unstoppable. We guess when we fix these holes and everything, now you got a team that can be developed together and grow so that the team can be unstoppable. Then all we got to focus on is 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 beating everybody else. So on that note, Blackberry, what's your take on our 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 um, position in the NFC South? Um, I feel like we're the strongest team in the South. I feel like we got the most balanced organization in the South. We not mm. a dumpster. We not a dumpster fire organization like the like like the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> the, 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 the Panthers, the Panthers, you feel you feel bad for the players, how bad that the organization is. You feel bad for the players. Yeah. You feel bad for some of the coaches that's on the coaching staff. Because it's like we can go out here and play our hearts out. This front office will figure out a way to fuck it all up. <laughs> 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 I mean that that that's just I mean that's just real. That re- it really make you feel bad for them players, man, and for them coaches, man. Cause this front office, they gonna gotcha, fuck it up. Bitch. Um gotcha, with the, with with New Orleans, you know I ne- it, I I I I kind of throw up in my mouth a little bit trying to say something nice about them. A little bit. You know, <laughs> so so because of that, I refuse to try to even utter anything positive about the Saints, other than <laughs> other than Terry Fontenot is picking all the good pieces out of y'all organization and leaving y'all with all the tainted shit, <laughs> which is fitted, which yes, is sir. fitted, considering you live in a damn tainted city, you play in a tainted city. <laughs> And give and get the most tainted damn fan base in the NFL because you really think you won some worth talking about when you did win, but we all know why what it was for. It was damn. It was a sympathy championship. I don't give a fuck what you say. <laughs> Man, I've been saying that for years, bro. You had you, you had one of the worst defenses. Yeah, one of the worst defenses in the league when you won. So miss me with that. That shit yeah. was even worth uh, bragging about. Yeah. And um, as far as the Buccaneers go, you know they went all in. 
They went all in on getting the champ in in for one ring and getting a championship. You're right. They and, went all in on the refs. The refs <laughs> pockets full of hell. Yeah, you, go, <laughs> you, you go when you go get Tom Brady. When you go get Tom Brady, you pretty much know oh, we finna have these refs in our back pocket. Oh yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. So that they man knew they had that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. They knew they had that. Um, they got the best of the, his latter years out of um, Leonard Fournette. So I oh, give him credit. I'm going to give the Buccaneers credit for going and getting Leonard Fournette right before he started declining and, and got a championship out of Gronk. Uh, 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 and, and Gronk had already declined a little bit. The only thing is he's Gronk. So right. he was going – he was gonna he was gonna show up in moments when you needed him to, yeah. and they got the they got the best out of his latter years out of him, Little Fournette. They got the best they they could get out of Tom Brady in his latter years. They went all in. They went to the senior home and they got and they went all in <laughs> on these senior <laughs> citizens, and, and it paid off for a season. So um, hats off to you, Tim Bay, but welcome back to the shithole. Welcome back <laughs> to the um, real world. <laughs> We are welcome back to the real world, Buccaneer fans. <laughs> well, um, that's what they do. <laughs> as far as our Falcons go, man, I, I think you would have to literally just be somebody that just love to hate the Falcons <clears throat> to not realize the direction that we're going in is upward. Yeah, right. I mean, you you would really have to be blind or just straight up just ignorant as hell to that's say. Man. Right it, to say that these Falcons are not trending up, um, two seven and ten back to back seasons with teams that didn't have no business winning seven games. Right. Um, according, <laughs> right on paper, on paper didn't have no business winning seven games. But it go back to what we what we've been saying about this coaching staff and how they're great at developing talent, how they're great at scouting, they're great at recruiting. And it, before I finish. I want to quote something Terry Fontenot said to um, Atlanta Falcons uh, report, to the Atlanta Falcons report. Uh, well, let me not say quote because I'm going to have to uh, – I'm going to have to <laughs> paraphrase here. But there he said uh, – he said uh, it's not always about free agency. It's not mm-hmm. always about how much we got in the salary cap. How much we are in the salary, uh, you know, how much money we got to spend in the salary cap. Uh, nothing's going to change the process. And like I said, I'm paraphrasing, but Terry said nothing going to change the process just because we have the second most wiggle room in cap space uh, in the NFL this coming up offseason. Just because we got the second most cap space, that does not mean that we're going to change our right. process. And it's so not he, all about, ahead, about, Barry, Barry. Yeah, it's not all about the early rounds in the draft. It's about all the rounds in the draft. Mm-hmm. Facts. And, every, and, and I mean that pretty much just sums up everything <laughs> we've been telling the fan base ever since he got here. Is that this is what this guy is is gonna predicate his movements on with this team. And that's what he's been doing. Y'all gotta pay attention, Falcon fans. Y'all got yeah, him and, him and Arthur Smith work so well together, bro. They work so well together. Arthur Smith know what he want to do, and Terry Funk know ain't scared to go get it. Yes. So what? So we, so we need I to be prepared to for another one year contract. Ahead, mama, bro. One more, one year contracts and a strong draft. Simple as that. That's what you're gonna see. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right, coach. I'm interested you're right. in saying. What they gonna do? Is they gonna go get um, Edgeron, your boy Edgeron from uh, Louisiana? I want to see if he gonna go with, work with them defense. Well, he, he, he has a job though. Say what? No, Ed, Ed, Ed Edgeron. But he have a job. Co- Co- Ed Edgeron. You know him yeah. and um, him and that deep Saints defense line coach used to work together. Right, right. But I think he's out of head coach somewhere. I think he's coaching somewhere. Now nah, he unemployed. You know he got fired from Louisiana. He got fired from. I think he got picked up at a small school. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's at a small school now. 
I did before. He in, a, he in an advisory role or he got a, like a defensive line? I'm about to look it up. I'm about to look it up. I think, I think he had a head coaching job, if I'm not mistaken. I could have had a head coaching job. Oh, okay. but, you know, but you know what? Pay very close attention. If if you want to know if, if 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 you want to know how heavy a team is going to go in the draft, pay very close attention to what they do and don't do in free agency. Exactly. Because like right, Mike and them right. said yesterday, free agency costs a lot of money because a lot of a, a lot of the standard has been raised by other teams signing. So you got to pay attention to who they're going to look at and whom they may they may pick. Like I said before, it's going to start in house. They're going to see who on the roster they can cut to save money. Okay? Then it'll go to the free agency to see who they can get for little or nothing. Cuz trust me, Terry ain't about to break the bank in no free agency. It ain't going to happen. That well, ain't yeah, something we got to right. worry. And I already seen what it looked like to be in Cap Hill, so I know yeah. he ain't gonna try to make that same mistake. No, nah. and wondering. then the draft. Go ahead, and, bro. Go ahead. And it, and then the draft is gonna be that that gut punch. But if you look at what they've been doing, they're strategically looking at players in this bowl they was playing in. They strategically mm-hmm. looking at they doing all of that. Why? Because when they get done. They're going to go back and say, we like him, we like him, we like him. Who can we cut to save what? Terry will say, I can run the numbers and figure that out. Because you got to think, one of the biggest one of the, one of the biggest savings we going to have is cutting Mariota. Mariota, gone. So for Mariota, well, if, yeah, if that's the ceiling, that. if that's the ceiling, everything else is going to be right below that. Yeah, I don't see them, I don't see them re-signing that, man, bro. Not no the way, way he went off on the team. I mean, no, you could have said you know. had your surgery or whatever. You still could have came well, back. Do your boy Kyle Pitts Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. What's that? We can't do anything to uh, March 17th anyway. You can't cut nobody until March 17th. Right, yeah, right, 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 right. So, in, so okay. right now. So, so right now what they're pretty much doing is they're just compiling who they like. They're compiling right. who they like, and they're, they're basically using relationships to see – where they can fit in and find out what they need to know. Then when it gets closer to March, then you're going to start seeing people just falling off. You're going to be finding – Terry going to find money like out of nowhere. You're going to be like, where he get that money from? What? They cut him? And But the closer we get to the draft, trust me, free agency, in my opinion, is where you need to really pay attention. Uh-huh. I want to see else going he said on in that all. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Something else he said uh, to the Falcon Report. He said um, it's about finding it's about finding the talent, and we have to find it. That's mm-hmm. something he said. It's about finding the talent. And we have to find it. Um, that, that that just goes to show that whether it's free agency or draft, just mm-hmm. because or uh, uh, the run pain become available. Yeah, okay. Well, we we we're aware. We're aware that he's that's what he's saying. He's saying we're aware. We're fully aware who of who's available. Mm-hmm. But uh but and and with him saying that we're not going to change our process just because, you know, we got, you know, we went through cap hill for the first couple seasons and now we finally got some money. We still going to go out there and find the talent. We ain't going to let the talent find us and say, "Oh, this this is just what it is." So it's what it's the uh, best. It's the best guy available. How much are you asking for? Let's work with him on it. It's about well, who else is out there? Who out mm-hmm. there that's not as expensive? That's that could be just as as uh, valuable to our yep. team. So that's something else he said. But go ahead, coach. You was gonna say something? Hey, I want to think about this guy. Last year, doing free agency, what we had about twelve million dollars. Give or take yeah. twelve million. Dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Look, what they, look what they brought in with twelve million dollars last year. You got yeah. Carter, you got Evans, you got several different bodies that came in there last year and produced on twelve million dollars. Uh-huh. That's 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 a, that's a damn good shopper. I hate to say it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> These guys came in for a million dollars. They, they, they wanted they wanted to be there. That's the thing. Uh-huh. People want 
football player, if they want to be there, they, they, they will sacrifice sometimes to try to get that next contract. Yeah. So, you got, I think, this is my take, I think we're going to keep Evans. I think. And I think we're going to keep Zoe. Those two I can say, I think we're going to keep. So, right that's now, that's like, that's like $10 million. I, I'm, I'm giving take 10 to $11 million just for those two guys. So, you're looking at like twenty five, about $30 million for three years total for both of them. Mm. Which is not a bad amount. No, it's not. So you're looking at what I want to say, though. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You know what I want to see? I want to see what's probably not going to happen is your boy Chuck Smith. <laughs> you know, he's been down there at the shrine bowl with them boys down there. And working with – I, I can see him working with the outside linebacker on that pass rush. But I'm thinking that man asking for too much money. I'm thinking Chuck Smith asking for too much money. Because I'm saying this man is out in our backyard. He and coach some of the best pass rushers in the league. And we ain't made this man no offer. I know why Dan Quinn didn't make him no offer. He was he full of himself. But I'm yeah. saying, like, I'm saying, like, Arthur Smith ain't went down to talk to him either yet. You know what I'm but saying? But think about this, but, though. Yeah, why, really? you, why, would, why would Chuck go coach and he making just as much money? Yeah. Well, he, still can, he, still can run his, he still can run his facility. You know what I'm saying? He's not the only one that runs that yeah. facility. He got other people working in that facility with him. He can do that and come and coach the defensive line and why his facility is still doing what he's doing. You feel what I'm saying? True, true, true that, but I don't know if he still had that urge to coach, though. Think about this. He he had a, he had a chance to go coach in college and stuff at a big school in college. He didn't take it. So I don't know if he still had an urge to coach. And he, and he is very hands-on at that with his camp. Yeah, He's yeah, very exactly. hands-on. Yeah. I I think yeah, that's I think what I was his, saying. Well, go go ahead. That's what I was saying. I don't think it's gonna happen, but you know what I'm saying? That'll be that'll be like icing on the cake if we get that man to come coach the outside linebacker, that'll top his defense off. But, but, like, you, but you know what? We benefit from that anyway because if you think about it, that man, his purpose now is that camp. But what he's yeah. doing is – what he's doing, he's taking the difficult work out of out of the NFL's hands and out of, out of professional teams' hands by coaching these, these, these guys up in proper techniques so that when they get to the NFL – Coaches don't have to teach you proper techniques. All they got to do is integrate you into the scheme. See, that's the thing. He's getting them. He's getting them before they have to be retrained on proper. Because you got a lot of you got a lot of players that's good, but they got bad techniques. So they come into the NFL with like Black Bear said, one or two moves, like you right. said, one or two moves, and with Chuck. He going to make sure that they progress to where they got a foundation to where all I got to do is really you plug and play because I already see your skill set. So I can put you here. I can put you there instead of saying I can't put you there because you ain't got hands or I can't put you there because you don't know how to you don't know how to get low. I can't put you there because you don't know how to wrap up, you know, stuff like that. Right, right. So. Plus, these players take to take initiative themselves. If they want to get better, they, sometimes they got to pay for you no know, pay for certain things, man. You don't want to pay like Big Beasy for one. They want to go pay the man. He all right. come on, man. I'm, I'm gonna take care of you. He, he still refused. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, you got to invest in yourself sometimes. Yeah. Definitely. And as you get this comment here from um, OG Big Sam, he said if Chuck wanted to coach in the NFL, he would be. He said the thing is he has a freedom and money as well. Is it, yeah, yeah, because you at some at, the thing about Chuck Smith that frightened Dan Quinn and them and, and Dimitrov and all of them was the fact that he was a player in the game that he embodied what he was teaching. And a lot of times when you got a regime that's all about flash, Chuck Smith came from the gritty part of the uh, era. They didn't want that. They had no identity, but they didn't want that. Plus, Dan Quinn didn't want to be outdone either. Right. I was was about to say, that was going to take the shine off of him. 
Because yeah. remember, Dan Quinn came from the Legion of Boom. So right. how did so how dare you come in here being a great player yourself, being entrenched in defense and outshine me when I'm the head coach? Hold on, Juan. Hold on. Let me let me let me explain something. Chuck Smith came to Seattle. He worked with Pete Carroll. That's correct. Uh-huh. You absolutely so correct. That, that uh-huh. is, you know, see, that that's the thing. But that's like, why he didn't bring these guys out here? That's what that was my thing. I said, okay, Chuck Smith was always in Seattle. He was working with Eric. He was working with a lot of those guys from Seattle. So I was like, why did Dan Quinn bring it? So Dan Quinn was like jealous. I'm going to hate to say it. He was yeah. jealous of the guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Selfish, bro. Selfish, bro. So it, it, yeah, exactly. He was, he was petty. So, yeah. I, so it ain't that. He, uh, when Chuck, it was like Dan Quinn didn't want him around. Because he was jealous of what he'd done to his D-line. And which I said, that wasn't Dan Quinn's defense. That was right. Bradley's you know what I'm defense. Saying? I'm Quinn the head coach. Couple, I'm the head coach. I love for this dude to come to here and go ahead and make me look good. Come on, man. I made that high. He got my defensive line looking good like that. Man, <laughs> they, ain't doing that they ain't doing that but effing you up, bro. It ain't hurting you. Right. It's helping you. Yeah, that's right. So that, right. That, that, that man, to be jealous of that and being petty like that, bro, that, that made no sense to me, bro. At all. Well, well like because, you know, what we're going to do is real quick, we're going to get y'all, we're going to get a chat a chance to come in. Um, before we uh get ready to close out, we're gonna get a chat a chance to come in. Y'all talk about it. Y'all wanna talk about whatever y'all wanna talk about, Falcons. We're gonna give y'all the opportunity. But here is the disclaimer. Don't mm-hmm. don't don't come in here with that pussy foot. <laughs> okay. <Hey. laughs> don't come don't in here with it. that pussy foot. Say it with your chest, Say it with your chest, nook. I'm going right. to drop the lane for y'all. <laughs> hey, hey, Coach, while Blackberry dropping that link, man, what's your thoughts on, on Brady's so-called retiring and our advantages, you know, in the NFC South? Bye. <laughs> 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 no, 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 true. Like, I heard you guys talk about, hey, man, hey, he did what he had to do, you know, he won his games, you know, so congratulations on the retirement, you know, but I still don't like it. However, he did what he did. Simple as that. That's, that's never going to say. But as far as us, man, we're in a, like you said, we're in a prime spot right now. We're the only team in the NFC South that has a real quarterback. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Your foundation starts with your quarterback. We have that. We got a running back. We know we got a running back. We got a uh-huh. tight end. We, got a, we, we, we have a nucleus. That can sustain us for the next seven years for sure. Yeah. So yep. it's all about you know bringing in the rest of the pieces, man. That's all it's about. We we're gonna be fine. Like you guys talked about a couple weeks ago. Well, actually, this past Sunday, I see playoffs in our future. Yeah. So yeah. You know. And and, and coach, to add to that, we got the last laugh because yeah. our rookie quarterback. Beat Tom Brady. Yeah. Oh, I, I, oh, hold on. Don't, don't, don't start that. I had a fuss with somebody that worked there about that. I said, Tom Brady, I said Tom Brady retired because my rookie quarterback beat his ass. Hey, hey. Look, I'm, look, look, why? Because he was getting his ass hit. That's why he ain't been okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. And a lot of people try to deflect like, like he yeah. didn't lose to him. Here's the he deal. You, you lost to him because you guess what? It doesn't matter if he didn't play in the second half. He's still a, he's still a quarterback of the team, right? right. Okay, who, who okay. Started, he didn't. He when, he left, when he left out, it was ten to ten, bro. So he wouldn't be right. the breaks off nothing. It was tied when you left out. They took right. you out because the Grady Jerry was coming back there like a, a oh, oh, like oh. pool in a china shop. Thank you. Grady was go- Grady was going for the throw. But I'm saying people look people look at it as oh well he didn't play the second half. He didn't have to play the second half. He's still a, he's still a leader on that team. And like we all said, with the wins and losses, regardless if it's a team sport, they the 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 accolades fall on the quarterback and the coach. So like yeah, I he said, took that up. He had ninety three losses going to the game. He got ninety four nil on his record. I looked at the record. He got ninety four losses. It happened yes, it happened, <laughs> happened two seasons ago. <laughs> so yeah, you yeah. lost. Right. Right. 
So we had Drake Harrison joining, but it it, it, it looked like you having some difficulties coming in, Drake. So oh, there you go. What's hey, going Drake. on, Drake? What's going on? What's going on? Drake? What's going on? What's going on, bro? It, man. Talk about it, man. What you want to talk about with the Falcon, man? Coaches, <laughs> players, it's on you. All right, man. First, I want I want to come in on what you said about what about Tuck Smith, man. Tuck Smith, if anybody remembers, is is is, is old Atlanta, man. So, uh, of course, uh, during the Dan Quinn era, Dan Quinn didn't want nobody to outshine that man. Uh, so I'm in agreement on that part. Um. I guess when it comes to the coaches, man, I'm I'm, I'm really excited about uh, Jerry Gray. I'm excited about Nielsen. Actually, I got a coworker who's actually a Saints fan, and he 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 crying about it right now. <laughs> he don't know what to do. <laughs> That's so, what they get. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, man, yeah, man, I, it's my first time being on, man. So, um, Welcome, brother. Welcome. Hey, appreciate I'm, you, brother. Appreciate yeah, you, bro. I appreciate it. But hey, I don't really got too much to say, man. I usually, you know, I usually say all my stuff in the comments and everything like that, man. But I just wanted to get on here and say, man, I appreciate you, boys, man. You guys are actually, uh, you guys and AFN are actually what Atlanta needs. Uh, I'm no longer in the state of, I'm no longer in the state of Georgia. Um, I'm out here in Maryland and in, in the DMV area. Oh, and we got you covered, bro. We got uh -oh. you covered. Uh -oh. <laughs> we got you covered. We, you we out there, bad, bro. You out there in Lamar Land. We know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, and they over here. They over here banging that whole Lamar thing, man. And uh, I keep trying to tell these folks that that's not that's old Atlanta. Old Atlanta, like the old regime, probably would have did something like that. Yeah, but we have the, we have developed a culture here, and and. You know, if we was to trade for Lamar Jackson, I think they'll burn the Mercedes Benz Stadium down. Man, they'll, they'll protest every game out there, bro. Every fucking game. We won't win every no game, game out there. <laughs> yes, sir. Bro, they, they wouldn't even put us on the scoreboard for having no 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 wins or losses. It'd just be zero zero. <laughs> it pretty much, man. I mean, they'll definitely sell seats like some of you guys have mentioned. Is um, you know, they'll put ass. I want to win the damn games. Exactly, yeah, coach. Exactly. Pictures, coach. The hell? I'm tired. I'm tired of some of these content creators. All they talking about is you know what I'm saying. When the fans are doing good, but when they doing bad, they want to talk all this bull crap. Man, I'm sick of all that fake love. You know what I mean? Exactly. Get all that. All these fake fans up out of there, bro. Even your fan to get not. Cleveland Brown, yes, they when well, they, they used to be sorry to death. They stands was always full though. That's loyalty, my dude. Exactly. You know what exactly. I'm saying? We don't. I mean, that's what we need down here. Bring yeah, that back. I see you coming back. That's that old history too, though. Yes, sir. But see, but see, you know what? It's a saying I said. I said we would rather be entertained losers than uncomfortable winners. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, and, right. and that's the era that we're in. We're in the we're in the era of uncomfortable winning because in order to build a team, in order to build a sustainable team, a balanced mm -hmm. team, a culture team, you're mm -hmm. gonna be uncomfortable at some points in time and right now if being uncomfortable means we do ten, two, seven, and ten seasons and turn around and get our stuff together the next season and we play our bound possibly going for the NFC Championship I will take that uncomfortable feeling oh, versus they, mm -hmm. being entertained and then we go we regress back to what they said this past season 2-15 and 15, and we trying to figure out what happened mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what you think about that Alex Appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, thank y'all for having me on. Uh, I mean, I think that that's uh, well, actually, you know, what? I'll go ahead and touch on like the Ryan Neeslin and Jerry Gray stuff, since that's what's uh, been popular right now. Um, it's it's kind of interesting because up until Ryan Neeslin got hired is like the first time I actually took a look at Al Holcomb, and once I watched his stuff, I was like, oh, Al Holcomb is really, 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 really good, but um. Honestly, with, with what you get with Ryan Neeslin, the main thing, you know, besides the fact that, you know, when you get what you get with him is uh, good coaching in regards to pass rush moves and run discipline and gap discipline and, uh, and, and various just gap control techniques when, when rushing the passer. You also get the fact that he was a co-defensive co coordinator with, uh, with, with Dennis Allen. And Dennis, I know we joke on Dennis Allen, but Dennis Allen is no joke. 
he, he is no joke. He's known for uh, coaching up his DBs to disguise coverages really, really well, which is, I think, the main reason why they got Tyron Matthew and Marcus May, because they're both versatile safeties. So you can use them in many different formations to fool uh, offense, offenses. So I, I guess – and it's funny because Rags had uh, – uh, David Dave Ragone had uh, had praised the the Saints Saints defense when we played them in the game that uh, uh, D, Dean Pease got injured. He was talking about how well coached they are in terms of the, their disguises, how well they they disguise their blitzes, the fact that they can play man coverage and shut out the uh, the, the the Bucks, uh, the fact that they that they are able to help their DBs both with pressure and with just like help uh, over the middle of the field. Like that to me is is important stuff because that shows to me that you're aware of your both both your defensive backs and your and your D line. That's that's one thing. And then there's the other thing of playing like quarters coverage, the things that's really popular right now around the league, the stuff that you see with the Eagles, the 49ers, uh, with the with the Broncos, with Big Bangio type stuff. Uh, with the with the Rams with uh, Raheem Morris, um, and that's what Jerry Gray brings. Jerry Bray, Jerry Gray has came uh, from the quarters based system where they ran over there in, in in Green Bay. Now, I'll be completely honest. If if someone looked at Jerry Gray off of this year and said that uh, that I don't want him, honestly, I wouldn't blame them because the Packers defense was 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 not good this year. As a matter of fact, Joe Barry probably should have been fired uh, this year. But but if you look at the if you look at the Week 18 game. Uh, versus the Lions, I I can appreciate how well their their DBs were coached, and and the and the certain techniques that they use to disguise their coverages, playing quarters, playing man, playing cover three, playing cover two out of various different shells or of the same look. Like if you if you just sit there and watch it and it looks boring to you, that means that the, that 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 the DC is doing a really good job, or or that the passing game coordinator is doing a good job. If you can't understand what's going on and it just looks boring to you. That means that they're doing a very good job in disguising their coverages and making things hard for 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 the QB. Because if you're not getting any information, the QB has no information. So I, I think that you get two different uh, minds, both with the D line, but also with uh, schematically. You know, you have a, a person that's that's more man base oriented, more disguise oriented, and then you get a guy who's come from this popular uh, uh, defense with quarters and. And and, and 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 shifting around and and, and and matching and all this type of stuff, and honestly, I think that it's a great fit because because uh, Arthur Smith had really preached versatility, so bringing in two DCs that are good at two different things is is a good is a good uh is a good good step in the right direction. Well, let's now go in reference go. in reference to your boy Dennis Allen, we never say he suck on defense play call. That man is a wizard on defensive play. Right. Right. He sucked as a head yeah. coach. Sure. Right. Head coach yeah. running a whole right. team, that man sucked. Yeah. If you want to go back to Green Bay defense, the way you tell if a dude is good or not, check out the the uh <clears throat> the defensive yeah. backs, see how they play in their coverages, see how they, they space it. How many turnover do you guys have up under this man tournament? He's not. He's not in control of the whole defensive play call. If he was in control of the whole defensive play call, then yeah, you got an argument. Yeah. But far as building up these DBs, that man build DBs, bro. They go get the ball. They always go get the ball. Well, well you know what? It, it, it's always. Before we get to Sam, it's always it's always a conundrum when you try to get defensive coaches to be able to run run offensive schemes. A lot of times, because the translation is a little is is, is a little thin. You know what I'm saying? Like I said before, our team is balanced because you have a head coach that is an offensive guy. His mm -hmm. DNA is offense. You have an an assistant head coach whose DNA is defense. So. He, the, Arthur Smith does not have to worry so much about how the defense is going to pan out because now he has a veteran that can handle that whose DNA is specifically for that. A lot of these teams, when these head coaches, defensive head coaches try to run the offense, a lot of times stuff gets missed in translation. Right. But, and, and Sam, I want to come at you with this. Uh, Arthur Smith also has a defensive background. So, yes, he does. Okay. So he understands what he he understands what he's looking for 
as a head coach for his defense as well. And considering okay, yeah. his ties with uh, Jerry Grace, uh, mm-hmm. OG, mm. talk about it. Yeah, talk about those the guys. Of that. Those guys work together. They have a history together. Okay, they all understand the mission. And I've been saying this for the past couple of weeks. Sustainable production and player development is the mission. Facts. So so these individuals out here still talking at QB noise. There's a special place for you in the corner with a dunce hat. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we ain't giving up no two first round picks and paying this fool the bag when he ain't finished the season in three years. Well, uh-huh. okay. All right. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them want to holler. Well, he an MVP. Okay, well, let's talk about that MVP year. The thousand yards he ran for. And what has he done ever since besides get broke up? There's film, people. Mm-hmm. There's film. Not to mention, he hard headed. Tell me when that man went to the one read. <laughs> he always one read and go. He ain't never read nothing else. One he, wants, read, he wants to. He wants to be the star. He wants to. He don't want to be a leader. He wants to be a star. Okay, and ain't no room with being no star when you're a part of an eleven man unit that you're supposed to be leading. But you ain't trying to throw the ball to nobody. That's why Hollywood Brown left. And miss me with that bull crap about he ain't had no weapons. That man had a top 10 tight end and a thousand yard running back in the backfield with him or with a top 10 defense and could not get it done. <laughs> Enough said on that. Talk that talk, Sam. Now, yes, sir. As, far yes, as, saying, sir. as far as saying goodbye to Mr. Brady, let me explain something to you. That legacy of juicing. Cheating and, and, and all of etc. etc. All right, in my book, always and forever, Joe Montana will be the GOAT at quarterback. Talk that talk, Sam. Thanks. Talk when you blow an undefeated season, no, nah, that's end of that, that conversation right there. Now, what's the oldest, oldest and truest saying? From the annals of the end of time, defense does what? Win championships. Okay. I get my tambourine. Yeah. <laughs> for you, for you idiots out here still with the QB in your mind. You can put something else down. I'm trying to keep it copacetic. You know, but <laughs> y'all need to get a grip. That fantasy, that fantasy will not happen. Big guy, this is a disease, y'all. It's a disease. So is delusional and denial. It's an epidemic. Go ahead, skip babies. <clears throat> right? Y'all running around here and talking about, yeah, we, 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 we want to, no, you don't want to win. You want to be entertained. There you go. Okay? You go. And entertainment don't get you championships. Arthur no. Smith has the no. basic football handbook 101, and he is running it step by damn step. <laughs> Sustainable production and player development, gentlemen, is the mission. You got to understand the mission before you talk about the mission. Step by step, day by day. One hundred. This 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 fan base yeah, has no clue. Mm-mm. They want to be excited. they want to be excited. They want to be entertained. Well, if moving the chains, getting first downs, and stopping the opposing team don't excite you, this ain't the this ain't the sport for you. Uh, OG, let me let, 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 yes, me, let me let me ask you a question. Uh, What's that? Uh, did they not call football back in the seventies, eighties, and nineties the gridiron? Ooh, ooh, ooh! You see, now you're gonna make me talk about that ugly girlfriend. <laughs> See, that, 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 that will cook for you. Slop him on the boat. And make sure you're good. 
The game of football ain't pretty. Never has been. Nope. The nope. game of football, you know, understand something. Everybody talk about how bad hockey and boxing is. The game of football will break your soul if you ain't careful. You okay? Hey. Moving them sticks, people. See, a lot of folks are caught up on this. You know, the, the greatest show on talk. That was, that, that was window dressing. How long did that last? Two, three seasons at best. Mm-hmm. Okay? You got a lot of these fools out here with this fancy GM Madden got their minded bullshit. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it clean. Yeah. But this is, this is, this ain't cute. It ain't pretty. And you can't put lipstick and, eye and mascara on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. It's first downs. Moving them sticks. Okay. Hey. Moving them sticks. And then you got a nasty defense that gets off the field on third down. So at the end of, at the end of the game, that clock strikes zero and you have minimized the, the possessions of the other team. See, that's beautiful. That right there, gentlemen, is beautiful. This uh, wants you to have you a, 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 a thong wearing quarterback running up and down the field doing a bad Barry Sanders impression. Nah, that ain't football. <laughs> That's something you find on the PlayStation. Hey, 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 and for all y'all that don't understand where, where, where OG Sam getting it from, OG Sam came up in the era where football, they were clotheslining dudes with casts on their arms. They would hit a running back and make him do a horizontal helicopter and he would still mm. get up and run. If y'all don't understand how rough stuff is, go look at that footage on Sweetness, on Walter Payton. Mm. Boy. Jim Brown. Boy. Boy. Understand. Understand. Boy. Understand. Boy. Well, boy, Walter Payton, the Earl Campbells of the world, Franco Harris, uh, William Boy. Andrews, Jerry Reed. Daryl Riggins. Yeah. Come on, man. Marcus Allen. Lawrence Stop Taylor. Me. Well, you really Stop felt how playing, man. they wanted it this year, man. You felt it this year. Them yeah. boys felt that See, every time they played us. They felt it. They See, was in their hot tour yeah, about they it, played it, us. If you notice, every time a team played us, they lost their next game. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. They, were putting, they, were they lost their next game. They were putting on them, bro. Hmm. Well, the, the, and the thing you is, know, the thing is, we're getting back to the gridiron, and every team yes. had to give their all when playing us, regardless of who it was, because the next game they either lost a player or lost players playing in that next game against whoever whoever else they played, and that's because we designed this team and this franchise now to have an identity, and if you notice, it's easier to get behind. A organization when they have an identity than it is mm-hmm. when you're just making it up game by game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then he, you, you have these fools that, you know, the funny sentence I keep hearing is, I, I like Desmond Ritter, but it wouldn't be no but if you really truly meant what you said. <laughs> wouldn't be no but. Personally, I don't, I don't understand how how anyone can look at the four game sample size of Desmond Ritter, and then look at Lamar uh-huh. Jackson and how much money he'll cost, and say, you know what, that's a that's a that's a good idea. I'm not gonna sit <laughs> here and throw shots at, at Lamar and say that he's a bad quarterback or anything like that. He's definitely not. He's he's he he, he is up there. Don't. Like don't don't don't. I am. Like, I am gonna uh, throw shots. <laughs> I am. Cause he's he, a running back. He he's a he running ain't back no leader. He, he ain't no leader. He ain't no leader. And he fragile. Right, what good did them twenty five to thirty pounds he put on do him this year? Hmm? They, what good did he do? Uh huh. What good did he do? They Okay. And what's the quarterback? We're supposed to be a leader. Quarterback supposed exactly. to be a leader. Exactly. Well, well, exactly. Hold, 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 hold up, guys. Hold up. Hold up. Go, what, what, what was you going to say, Alex? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, there's like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, 
I'm gonna reserve like some things for for Lamar because I'm not gonna like because 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 cause he 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 in terms of being a quarterback, I just don't see the reason to go ahead and 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 spend like forty million on Lamar in this system. Like Lamar is a good quarterback in my eyes. Uh, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of things that are going on with the Ravens organization, at least on the offensive side of the ball. More specifically, with their passing game, that I, it's just too complicated to get into. For example, Greg Roman that 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 ship is sailed for a reason because Greg Roman, outside of designing run plays, is kind of kind of bad. Um, the the passing weapons outside of the tight end is kind of bad or really bad. But there, there, there's there's a few other things that's getting in there that I don't really want to get into. But it's 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 the fact that you want that people want to pay forty million for a quarterback that doesn't necessarily like like it, he's not Patrick Mahomes, he's not like Josh Allen where he has a, a ridiculous arm, uh, he has crazy athleticism and his arm isn't bad uh, to say the less. But like it's not like he's gonna necessarily carry this team by itself. And meanwhile, when when I look at the tape that I've seen from Desmond Ritter already, he showcased that he does have the arm, to, uh, arm talent to, to to make those plays from far hashes. You can maybe uh, uh, argue maybe about his accuracy. You can maybe argue uh, situations where maybe uh, they're not asking him to always read the full field uh, in certain situations uh, because of pressure or whatever it may be. Um, and that's fair. Uh, but from what I've seen personally, I love the way this offense is headed. I love the fact that we play. I, I got a question. And he's checking. Yep. Hmm? I got One, a question. That's going to kill this whole Lamar Jackson bullcrap. Why would you want to pay him the bag when he gave you the same numbers Marcus Mariota gave? Yep. Why go I'm to the Gucci that. store when you can go get the same thing uh-huh. at Target? Well, no, nah. I, I answer that. Sick I answer, Sick I answer that. Okay. To answer your question, OG, it's because they want to pay they want to pay forty plus million dollars because it's popular. Okay, now to um to Alex, this is the reason why we have a problem, and I'm not saying you we not I'm not singling you. I'm just answering what you were saying. We this this Atlanta Falcons team is building has hopes in Ritter because he projects sustainability because the thing is Lamar's hurt for a reason. Okay. Yeah. And he's hurt because mm-hmm. his athletics has exceeded his QB IQ. And a lot of people not going to like to hear that. The same right. thing that happened with Vic, his athletics superseded his QB IQ. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you a game. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a game and a situation as to why Ritter gives you that sustainability. It was the Tampa game. When they decided that Ritter was getting, getting in the rhythm, they started sending blitzes up the gut. Yep. That one blitz, I can't remember on what down it was, but that one blitz, what it looked like, they had Ritter and they were getting ready to get him for a um, sack. Yep, I know exactly and what Ritter, you're talking about. Ritter, yeah. Ritter ducked his head. He spun <laughs> out. Yep. He rolled to the right, and he still was looking downfield, poised enough to make a throw. That is the difference between him and Lamar. Lamar would have, if he'd have gotten out of that, Lamar would have ran at least three more miles before he even thought of throwing it and would have tried to go for the first down. And that's what we talk about because over time, that kind of play, you're going, somebody's going to get to you and they're going to hit you and it's going to affect how you play. And this is the reason why he's been out because his athleticism has gotten him hit more times than not. Ritter over the course of time, because he's pocket aware, he has that great pocket awareness. If the pocket breaks down, running is his last resort making them throws and making them accurately in tight windows is what's going to help him sustain himself for the long haul. As mm-hmm. long as we have an O-line that backs him up, he'll be fine. Mm-hmm. He won't be yeah. running for his life. And that is the reason why, like I said before, we want to be entertained losers instead of uncomfortable winners. Developing Ritter is uncomfortable. 
And yeah, all of them, they, they don't want to have, they they have the uncomfortable conversation. They don't want to have that uncomfortable conversation. Let, let me help them. Let me let me help uh, some people understand analyzing a quarterback and analyzing a running back. Mm. When you analyze a running back, you're looking at his first step. You're looking at his mm-hmm. vision, and you're looking mm-hmm. at his ability to take contact. That's Preach. all you looking at with a running back. First step, vision, ability to take contact. When you're looking at a quarterback, you're not looking at anything that has to do with a running back. Right. Absolutely nothing. At all. If your scheme is that of an RPO scheme like Philadelphia with Jalen Hurts, like Chicago with Justin Fields, like even with Baltimore with Lamar Jackson, then now you're looking at, okay, what does he bring to our RPO game with running the ball? (laughs) This is not what you're – this is not a quarterback per se that you want for the long haul because he's going to take – like one is saying, he's going to take a lot of punishment, and when it's time for him to throw the ball, he's more than likely going to run first, then stare down – that, then to then to stare down that lane and stand in that pocket and deliver a ball. When we watched, when we watched Marcus Mariota for thirteen games, we didn't just watch him overthrow and underthrow receivers. We watched him not throw the damn ball. Period. When when lanes presented themselves. Marcus Mariota, if he didn't feel comfortable throwing it, he just didn't throw it. And mm-hmm. credit him, if you don't want to, if you if you want to play it safe and not throw the ball because you don't want to throw an interception or whatever the case is, hey, by all means, you do that. Just know your time as a quarterback is not going to be long in the NFL. Not You're not going to have a long career. Yeah. When we watched Ritter in those four games, and now you can, I can even take it back to his college yeah. days. I can even right. take it back to Cincinnati. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. That man does not care. He will sleep. Yep. He will put he that ball the intangibles. wherever it needs. He's capable of throwing it in tight spaces. He's capable of, of putting more air on it if he needs to. He's mm. capable of, of putting an angle on the throw if he needs to. And he will do it in in-game situations. We yeah. saw it in those four games, and we saw him do it in Cincinnati. Marcus Mariota yeah. has been playing exactly the same all of his football career, college Bad. and professional. He never evolved into more of a quarterback, less of a runner. He never mm-hmm. evolved. When Vic, in his latter years in Philadelphia, he evolved more mm-hmm. into a quarterback. Uh, I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a use somebody else for an example. Uh, in his latter years, uh, damn, your name just escaped me. Uh, San, San Francisco 49ers, uh, happening, no back even further. Damn, Steve, Steve, Young. Steve Young, Steve Young, Steve Young, okay, okay, Steve Young. He ran more. He he was he was the same way. He was running the ball more than he needed to. But later in his career, when he got to San Francisco, he learned how to throw the ball better. So he became mm. more of a quarterback. Lamar Jackson, I'm not seeing him evolve the way other quarterbacks that are capable of running. I'm not yeah. seeing him evolve the way they did. Nothing. If somebody can explain to me how he's gotten better throwing the ball, I will listen. And then you will have to show me proof of that. But from what I've seen, I have not seen proof of him evolving at the quarterback position. And that's why he's gotten stale in the league. That's why Mm -hmm. defensive coordinators know how to prepare for him better. Defensive players Mm -hmm. have seen enough tape on him to say, this is what I need to do when playing Lamar Jackson, and it will work more times than not. 
Yeah. Is he going to be dynamic and get loose sometimes? Yeah, he is. Yeah. But most of the time, teams are going to be ready for Lamar Jackson because he hasn't evolved at the quarterback position. When I look at Desmond Ritter, I don't I don't only see him as being a throw it first quarterback that's mobile, but I also mm-hmm. see him evolving in the game, even though we got a small sample size. Two games, we saw him make mistakes. That were rookie mistakes. Mm-hmm. And in the last two games, we saw him get better from those two games where he made all those mistakes. Indeed. indeed and he true. still didn't turn the ball over. Yeah. So and- that's what I'm looking at going for going forward. When I'm when all this Lamar Jackson talk come up, fans need to stop and think. Is it are you really excited because it's the name? Or are you mm-hmm. or are you excited because you think he actually make your team better? Here's my here's my specific scouting report on Desmond Riddle. What 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 we gonna do is is, is, uh, we we had an hour forty. We gonna get ready Uh to wind it down. But what I am gonna do, I'm gonna get everybody's uh, we gonna get everybody's final words and everything. Want to thank all you guys for tuning in and thank you guys for coming on. Um, I'm gonna finish up. I'm gonna start with uh, OG. Let him finish his, and we we can go all the way around. OG, what you was about to say now? What's what's your final words on that, man? My 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 actual scouting report on on Desmond Ritter, and the thing that impressed me the most, you know, what I'm saying with him is his 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 intangibles to recognize a mistake and communicate with his guys, and the answer, what did you see as opposed to what I saw? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That that right there. And he had that at Cincinnati. Mm. Matter of fact, the, the, what 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 put him, what put him on my radar was the game against Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was wearing us out. He sure did. He was wearing us out. And you know, Georgia and Alabama are the closest thing to NFL defense that you're gonna get in college. Mm-hmm. Okay, and he was he was working us out. All right. And then uh, you fast forward that to the preseason games that he had and the four games. This, bro, you 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 got to be amped and ready, man, for this kid. Mm-hmm. You got to. I mean, you know, there there is no reason why you wouldn't want to have him as your quarterback. Mm. Facts. You know, I mean, what are we talking about here? You know, we. The the, the 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 way we're set up right now, we there's no way we can mess this up. It it just isn't going forward. There's no way to mess this up because you put a defense on the other side of him with with everything that's set up. With all the, do y'all realize we are the third youngest team in the league at this particular point? Yeah. Yeah. And it's crazy. We're still we're we're seven and nine or seven and ten. That's that's yeah. that's, that's pretty yes. impressive. Go ahead, get yes. your final thoughts, Alex. Uh, I'm a I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, first I want to just say this uh, about Lamar Jackson. Um, in regards to him about a, as a passer, I'll, I'll be com- I'll be completely transparent with you. I've watched like a little bit, like very very little. In the, in the grand scheme of things, compared to a lot of other people that have watched Lamar Jackson follow him through, through college, I've watched pretty little. But what I am aware of is, uh, well, I, I know that G- Greg Roman, throughout uh, the time that he's worked with uh, Lamar Jackson, has been criticized a lot for his, the, how he's designed the offense in terms of schematically in the passing game to the point where they had to hire multiple passing game coordinators to help with that. And things just really haven't worked out, especially they're they're lacking a lot of talent at the receiving position. Um, so there's just there's multiple things uh, in a part of that. That's not necessarily an excuse for Lamar Jackson. There's there's been flashes. There's been a, a, a quite a few flashes that I've seen that that leave me optimistic. And I think that Ravens fans, uh, there there's there's some optimism there. But in terms of the money, it just to me doesn't necessarily make sense. It it really doesn't like. What I've seen from uh, Desmond Ritter that makes me optimistic is 
the first thing that when we point to or what I pointed to as a negative for him was his accuracy. That's the main thing, whether it was uh, just random uh, inaccuracies, uh, short game or sorry, quick game uh, into in, into the intermediate and especially deep down the field. You know, that, that, that happened to be a problem and he fixed it. And I think that that's a big credit to him as a player, but also to, uh, to, to the person that he worked out with, with Jordan Palmer, who's also known for helping uh, people out with, with their accuracy issues, especially during the draft process. I, uh, I also appreciate the fact that Arthur Smith was aware of all of this and held him off and, and gave a good, decent, good, uh, gave some good tape for the, for these four games with the, maybe exception of the Saints game. Cause I don't like schematically how that was drawn up. That's, that's a different story. Um, what I think people should be very, very happy about when it comes to Desmond Ritter is that he is not afraid to push the ball, even in situations where maybe he probably shouldn't. He's not afraid to push the ball and, and go for the deep ball and go for the goal ball and, 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 and throw a good one. He, he, he's, he, he's capable of throwing multiple good uh, deep, uh, deep throws from any hash. He, he, he's, he's good. He has the arm strength. He's shown that he's had the accuracy. To me, it's just con- continuing that consistency uh, and, and mobility-wise in terms of his knowledge of the game, in terms of how he reads things out. I have no problems, no regards in there. I think it's just him just continuing to get better, uh, facing uh, facing more complex defenses where they 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 they'll confuse they'll they'll try to confuse the crap out of him. But I think that he's capable of of doing so. I think he, this four game sample size, uh, people haven't really been paying attention to. I, I would highly suggest for some people to, to 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 rewatch them because to me it's it's pretty it's pretty decent. Go ahead, Will. Oh well, so I'm just ready to see what's gonna happen. Though. I like everything <laughs> we're doing right now. You know what I mean? I like the direction we're going. I like the foundation Smith is built here. I like the way Terry Funk no draft. Everybody here drafted and then came through and did something, bro. Everybody here in draft. So I like to see that part of the game and see the boy develop more talent. And now I just want to see how he been doing his all uh, in his all season getting these free agents with this money. That's gonna be that next step. And I think I mean they already was like I said before, they was already feeling us last year. They ain't wanna play us. Now we just gotta come away with the win now. You come away with more dog. You know what I mean? Right. That's the fun. Right. Go ahead, coach. Hmm. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh. Coach, you Go ahead, coach. coach. We can hear you, coach. I don't know. I think I think Dirk Cutter tried to get his mic. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Ant, and then we'll we'll get back to Coach. He he over there, uh, yeah, over there trying to punch Dirk Cutter out. <laughs> hey, all I'm gonna say is like everybody, just 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 be patient, and you know, um, they finna take us for a ride. That. We are finna run the NFC South for the next seven to ten years. Y'all can y'all can mark it down on your, uh, on your calendars right now. But yeah, yeah, I said it. I and said, said it. it today. He said it I today. Said it today. With his chest. Everybody know when I say shit, I don't I don't backtrack. I don't hide. I don't. No, you can put it in the bank because. Mm-hmm. What what the Saints looking like? What what their cap situation? Shit, high garbage. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bucks, what they looking like? Pimply tied me. Oh, shit. Pimply tied me. And we already know. I mean, look, why I alluded to it earlier. The Pampers, yeah, they got a pretty good defense, but we already know that they have a revolving door in their quarterback room. And when you don't know who your starting quarterback is, you can't <laughs> win games. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let alone division championships. But I digress. 
Y'all ain't shit. What you got, Coach? What's me? Hey, man. I just want to tell you about to stay tuned, man. It's going to get good. So just stay tuned, man. Just be patient. That thing develop because we're going to be okay. Simple as that. Hey, look, I'm going to tell you, like we, we've been saying, we are going to be the NFC South. Get ready for it. You ain't got to like it. Mm-hmm. You can talk about mm-hmm. all the other goofy stuff you want to. Hop on when the wagon. Come, when you come to the South, you're going to have to go through us. Simple and plain. Right. That don't mean that don't mean we're going to take nobody in the division lightly. Nope. That just means we're going to end up setting the standard in the South. Hey, Juan, that's true anyway. You got to come through Atlanta and go to all these towns any damn way. Thank you. <laughs> That right. part. <laughs> might, might, might as well live up to our position, right? That's it. Hey. <gasps> but Blackberry, the deacon, the defense, look, go ahead and take us out of here, man. We appreciate you for allowing us to get on, you know, Definitely. today, you know, give these fans yeah. with some some good news or whatnot. We don't want to stay too long because we got our brothers, uh, Mike and them, Mike, you know, probably getting ready to set up a show. So, um, hey, man, give us your final thoughts, man, and then take us out of here. Home team, y'all know what time it is. If you're on the AFN side or the GSN side, go over to my channel, Blackberry Larex. That's Blackberry, no C. Ain't no fruits in the cake. <laughs> no fruits over here. Ain't no fruits over here. <laughs> hey, homie don't, homie don't play that. <laughs> right. <laughs> y'all go over to my channel. Y'all hit that sub button, man. Y'all hit that like button, that notification bell. <laughs> Tomorrow night, just like every Thursday night, we got the Rex Pit, 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You don't miss it. You're going to have some of these guys hit, uh, there. Going to have my brother Denzel there. Might have a surprise guest like OG Big Sam right there or OG True Hurts. Um, yes, we, you know, you never know who might show up. And we might do an impromptu for the chat. Let y'all come in and get y'all a little shine on too. So every Thursday, the Rex Pit, 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Do not miss it. Um, uh, and, and just to put this blank, to put this plain for everybody, as plain as I can put it. You may want Lamar Jackson here. Mm-hmm. It don't mean nothing. Not a drop. Nathaniel. I understand the general fan base. The general fan base just want excitement. And if winning comes with it, you're happy. But you're happy as long as you're excited. I get it. Trust me, I do. I may have been a time before one of those things when I was younger when I was younger and I really didn't die get deep into concept of football when even when I was playing football maybe if I would have put more focus on the game maybe I would have went further that's me keeping it real with myself so I'm going to ask you all the fan base keep it real with yourselves do you really know what you want your team to be? Or are you just waiting for the season to start so you can buy tickets and take picture on TikTok? Or you in front of the Mercedes Benz <laughs> Stadium and you walking down on, one man. of them big, on, beautiful people. aisles that they got in the stadium with all those restaurants and bars and lounges don't, and all. You just want to them in. like that. Go to the game and put on your new Lamar Jackson number eight jersey and be able to take pictures at the stadium. Win or lose, that's what you want to do. That's fine. We're not telling y'all y'all can't feel that way. We're not telling y'all y'all can't feel that way. You feel that way as much as you want. But when we deliver to you, when we deliver to you facts, when we deliver to you what the organization and the coaching staff is looking for. All we ask that you do is pay attention to what we're saying and then think about it. 
before you decide to have a stupid ass opinion. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm. But that's just what it is. Wow, wow. Wow. Don't apologize for making them uncomfortable. Let me get my tambourine. <laughs> Somebody need to hear my tambourine. Now, as always, we'll appreciate we'll appreciate y'all coming through. Y'all make sure y'all do the thing, man. Show us some love. Subscribe if you haven't. Like the channel. Like this right now. Like it right now. Hit that like button. Hit that share button and share this out to your Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want. That's how we're going to get everybody in this uh, up to 10K, 1K, 5K, whatever it is we're trying to reach. We're doing this for y'all. We're doing this for the fan base. All right? Now, right. y'all know what time it is. Catch us on the flip side. Mm-hmm. Home team. Home team. Later. Deuces. Hey.